Yeah, well, evaluation of this Kepler in six minutes is going to be impossible, but I'll try my best. Can you hear the volume? Or no? <laughs> Shoot. So there's a music with it. Like, I'm sexy and I know it. And essentially, he's playing with his scapula. So this is not pathologic, by the way. So this is very important. This is not scapula winging or dyskinesia. Or, so don't go and treat and do fusion or whatever. He's playing. He's dancing. So. But when patients, they present and they have limitation of motion pain, this is when it becomes pathologic. And when we describe abnormality, uh, dyskinesia and winging, sometimes they're confusing in terms of treatment algorithm. For this reason, we came up with the term STEM, scapulothoracic abnormal motion, that will encase essentially everything. So abnormal is abnormal. No medial, no lateral winging, no, none of this. It's an abnormal motion, try to figure it out. And we should understand the anatomy like anything else. And the shoulder is not the glenohumeral joint. The shoulder is the shoulder girdle, this area in the proximal part of the chest that is SC, AC, scapulothoracic, and glenohumeral. And any bony pathology or muscle pathology can lead to STEM. But let's talk about the muscle. There are six muscles like around the scapulothoracic articulation are important. And their function, most of you, as a shoulder surgeon, we don't deal with them anymore, uh, like as much. Levator scapula, insert medial. It lifts the scapula, but it does not uh, bring the acromion up. Rhomboid minor and rhomboid major, mostly they retract the scapula close to the spine. The pect minor is very annoying muscle that to bring the scapula anterior, it can mimic winging or stem. If you lift the pectoralis major, we do this one when we do pedicle pec transfer, and you try to stimulate the pectoralis minor, you can see in vivo, this is nothing better than in vivo, you can see how the front of the shoulder pull forward, like this motion, boom. It go into anterior tilt, almost like what you see when you see if you have serratus dysfunction. For this why it's the only muscle that originates from the anterior chest on the coracoid to pull the scapula almost like a rope anterior and can dysfunction. And, and I'm going to leave it for Eric Wagner to show you what we can do when it becomes hyperactive and dysfunctional. The serratus originates from the chest and, and insert on the scapula medial, but the most important, the distal part. Why? because it bring and protract the scapula anteriorly during shoulder motion. This is very important. And keep it on the chest wall. So during flexion, you need this distal scapula to keep on moving forward to clear the subacromial space for flexion. And if this one is not functional, the patient can have perfect deltoid rotator cuff, the scapula go become unstable and the patient become locked and he cannot move as much. Trapezius is the only muscle originating from the base of the neck to the lateral acromion is the only muscle that can lift the scapula in the vertical position and can hold it as well from retraction and anterior tilt. Every patient with trapezius paralysis, they have lateralization of the scapula, they have limitation of abduction, and the shoulder droop and, and a drip uh, also tilt anterior. So it's very important to understand how these muscles work together to evaluate the shoulder and know how to do it very well. If the six muscles around the scapulothoracic don't work in synchrony, you're going to have a stamp. And since the scapula sits on the posterior chest and the scapula is the house of the rotator cuff, if the scapula become unstable, no matter how good the rotator cuff are, they're going to be unstable. If you're sitting in an unstable house, you're not going to be stable even though the rotator cuff are perfect. Even if the labrum is normal, you can dislocate your shoulder. That's very important. So this patient has everything is perfect. She's subluxating his shoulder. She cannot move because she has a very severe stem. The house is unstable. So, now we came, this is a new, we came with the STEM classification. That in case 95% almost of everything I know about the scapulothoracic abnormality. STEM one is when you have pect minor hyperactivity with minimal STEM. So the patient have anterior tilt with a hyperactivation of the upper trapezius. They have some limitation of motion. This is what Matt Provencher talked about and we talked about when simple pectoral spine release will help the patient without addressing the scapula itself. STEM number two, you have two types, 2A and 2B. Both of them, they have significant STEM with attempt of motion, but the difference between the two in 2A is very easy to reduce, and the patient can have their motion back. This is 2A. Every one of these patients have, for this kind of STEM, have perfect periscapular muscle in terms of no paralysis. 2B, they have the same abnormality of the scapulothoracic motion, but you cannot reduce the scapula. It's, or you can reduce it, sorry, but it's hard. So you have almost to push hard on it to be able to reduce it to get the flexion up. So this is 2B. Now, 3 is easy, serratus paralysis. And this is one, what, what we want to change about what we learn, because oh, this is all what we know, either dyskinesia or paralysis, but this is different. 4 is trapezius paralysis. 
Five, if both, trapezius and serratus paralysis. Six, very hard one. The patient come with locked, locked shoulder in the front. They cannot move. You cannot reduce them. They, lock, they look like dystonia, but the muscles are normal, but they have a very abnormal activation of the muscles. Seven, there's a 7A, 7B. 7A is a, is, a, is a dancing scapula during attempted motion. And 7B is a scapula is dancing regardless whether the patient move or not. So this essentially in case, essentially 95% of the scapulothoracic amyloidity, and I don't have time to talk about the treatment. But what happens if the muscles are abnormal but there is no paralysis? How can we figure it out? With surface EMG, we were able to figure it out. Very interesting, during attempted shoulder motion, the trapezius, deltoid, uh, and pectoralis serratus activate. But the muscles that they don't activate are the pec minor, rhomboid major, and latissimus. But if you have abnormality like this, what happens is the pectoralis minor becomes, become hyperactive, upper trapezius hyperactive, the serratus become hypoactive. But in this case, when you see them, when you see this patient, everyone will say, oh yeah, this is medial winging, very confusing. But how can you differentiate? Like if this is abnormal, and you see the patient with serratus paralysis, they have this medialization of the scapula. How can you differentiate? Last, only one minute, okay? Just one minute, I'm sorry, I'm late. Shall I stop? No, we can't. So with serratus paralysis, there are three exams. I used to think they work very well, but I was mistaken for two of them. Number one, flexion at 30 degrees, it does wing the scapula of the chest for serratus paralysis, but it can mimic also, you will see it, pectoralis minor. I thought this is an excellent test, I was mistaken. Push-up test, I don't do it anymore. I used to think anyone who does wall push-up test, they have winging of the scapula. This means they have serratus paralysis. That was wrong as well. And the third one, protraction against resistance, where you resist the scapula of, against the, your hand, and the wing of the chest, this is a good one. So what was going on? What is wrong? So we have three patients right now, perfect serratus, perfect trapezius, flexion at 30 degrees, they have the scapula is winging of the chest wall. This is number one. Number, again, patient, all of these patients have perfect serratus and they have a positive wall push-up test. What, was, what is going on here? Patient trapezius paralysis, the serratus is perfect. She has a positive wall push-up test. So how can we figure it out? Again, from surface EMG. What we noticed is if you do flexion at 30 degrees, the pec minor can take over and can wing the scapula off. When you get to the above 90, the pec minor cannot engage anymore. So in this case, if you do the test above 90 and the scapula does not wing, it means the serratus is perfect and the pec minor was, was the problem. So this is 30 is positive. It looks like serratus. 60 is positive. Go to 100, which should be the worst, is negative. Serratus is normal. Doesn't matter what the EMG will say. And I can show you hundreds of examples of these. So this is, we call it the SFRT test, shoulder flexion resistant test at 30, 60, and 100. If the test is negative 100, it means it's pec minor hyperactivity and the serratus is normal. So then you ask me, how about the serratus paralysis? The test is positive at 30, 60, 100, 120. So this is 30. All of them, you can see, is positive at 30, positive at 60, positive at 100. That is a positive SFRT test. The serratus is paralysis regardless of the AMG. And we published about this one. We'll talk about the treatment later. Thank you very much.